All right, guys, welcome back. My name is Devit with Memphis Game Developers, and today we are going to be looking into RPCs with Netcode for Entities. This is going to be another uh, quick run through of some of the basics that are in the uh, Netcode samples uh, GitHub repository from Unity. And like I said, this one is covering the RPC sample. So before we established our connection between the client world and the server world, and now we're going to actually be sending data between the two. We can look at some of this code here. And it is just a pretty simple um, chat box here. And we'll just run through um, some of this code real quick. It's pretty standard stuff. Um, you might not have seen native queues before. This is part of the Unity collections. And these are just um, value type um, collections that can be used in our entity systems that can't use regular queues and lists and whatnot. Uh, basically here, this script chat box is uh, in mono behavior world. So we're gonna be starting here and this is where we're gonna actually send our RPC out. Uh, the first thing we'll do here is grab our client world and we have to loop through them all because on our host we'll have a client world and a server world um, plus any thin clients that are running as well through the editor um, on our client we'll just have the client world so it doesn't really matter uh, we're using uh, this owner own user int here as just to log our own network ID so we can use it to color our own uh, username and chat messages as our, I think it was blue here. Uh, yeah, basically just on update, we're going to DQ our user list and our messages that are going to get populated by our systems here. We'll go over that in just a second. And this is how we actually send the RPC. So in order to do that, we just need to create an entity uh, that has a couple of components on it. One will need to have this send RPC command request uh, and also our actual RPC command, which is basically just our structure that we're going to be sending across the network. And you'll see this kind of pattern over and over again. You'll create your entity and then you set your data components on it. Uh, and then that basically just drops it into the world and the systems will pick up on it and do what they do with it. So here we are grabbing the chat message that we just uh, created here and we're setting our data on it, which is just going to be uh, this string message. And then if we set a target entity, this is how you can send RPCs to a specific uh, network ID. If it's null or default here, uh, it will get broadcast out to everybody. Well, if you're the client, you're only connected to the server, so it'll just go to the server on the server side in the server world uh, without a target it just broadcasts out to all of your clients uh, here we'll look at the actual rpc command itself this is our chat message you have to implement uh, irpc command uh, in order for it to get sent and just like the network variables in netcode for game objects uh, these will have to be structs with value types. So you can't use strings or lists um, or any of those managed types. Uh, and our chat user is just going to be uh, the actual network ID that we're using. Uh, you could also include other things like all your player data could be here as well. 
you generally want to keep these small as possible because this is what is actually being sent over the network. So if you can, you know, just send a string or an int. And if you need multiple um, RPCs to do so, that will just help you optimize better instead of sending like everything all at once all the time. Um, this chat user initiated uh, is just a tag component. Uh, we're using this for when a new client connects. Uh, it will not have this component, and then we will add it to our user list to send out to the other clients. Okay, the actual system here. So if this is the first time you're seeing an entity system, it is uh, a system base. There's also an I system struct you can use as well for systems. If you're using uh, jobs, this is everything executing it on the main thread. So we don't have to worry about jobs at the moment. You will have to specify the actual world system filter here. And for multiplayer, it's important because not everything will have what will be running in both worlds. So this is going to be our server system. So it's only going to exist in the server simulation. This system won't be running on our clients at all. And vice versa, we have a client system that will not be running on the server. Uh, basically, native list, uh, that's going to be our list of users. Like I said, it's just gonna be our network IDs. Uh, you'll need a command buffer here because we're going to be doing some actual changes to these entities, creating them, destroying them, and whatnot. So to actually receive the RPC that we sent, uh, really all you need to do is have a system that or a query really that queries for the receive rpc command and also the actual command that is being received once we do this uh, we can grab the command source connection from our uh, lookup our component lookup that we got up here this will get the network ID that sent this message. We are going to add that to the chat message at the very beginning. So it'll just be like user one, user two, user three, and, and then the actual chat message. So again, just like before, when we're sending it from the client, uh, this is sending it from the server. We're just broadcasting it back out. So Actually, before we do that, we'll destroy the actual RPC command because we don't need it anymore. Then we create a new entity, just like we did before. We will add this component to it, our chat message. Then we add the send RPC command request. And that's basically we resend this out to everybody because it's a broadcast. There's no target. Generally, I like to keep uh, the queries into separate systems. Um, I don't want uh, a system doing too many things at once. Um, there's no real reason to receive the chat message and also uh, send out the new users in the same system, but it doesn't really hurt this way either. So what we're doing here is we are just getting all of our entities with a network ID, but also that does not have this uh, chat user initialized tag. And we do the same thing. We create an entity. We'll add the user chat user component. We'll add the network ID to that user data. 
and then we send the well, we'll add the send RPC command request. Then we'll drop that in there. This will also create uh, another entity for each existing user. So this is for like late joining users. Uh, if we have uh, an existing list already, we'll do the same thing, create a new entity for each of the existing users. Then we'll add the joining user into our list. Here on the client system, it's a little bit quicker here. So again, we uh, grab our command buffer. This is only gonna be updating with when we have a network ID. And this is actually has to go through and uh, delete any of the RPC commands from thin clients. Uh, thin clients don't actually run any other systems. So if we don't uh, deal with them, then they'll just end up causing errors. But we still do want them connecting to the actual game just because we want to test users. So here on the client side, when we receive um, a new user RPC command, uh, basically all we're gonna do is add it to our, uh, we have that uh, user queue, native queue over on the uh, chat box window mono behavior. That is gonna be what um, it, populates that side of the window with its users. We'll do the same thing with our chat messages. We'll just receive the command request from chat messages. Uh, we destroy the actual uh, request, but then we dump the message into its queue. And that is basically it. We can see it in action here. Oop, have our start host. Well, I guess we need to play first. All right, and we can start our host. We see our thin clients here. They're all connected. Can type and on my laptop here I can also start client and we have a seventh user and also talk and there we go All right, so that's the basics of RPCs and uh, sending information back and forth. Um, there's definitely room for some improvement with our um, interface here, but this is not gonna be a video on the interface. All right, so I know that that was um, pretty quick by our standards, but uh, if you guys have any other questions, just definitely leave a comment or join us on the Discord. We will be glad to help out. All right, see you guys next time.